What other biological, neurobiological differences as a function of sexual orientation? Another one that comes through over and over and over again, which what do you make of this, is apparently there is a reliable gender difference in the length of the second finger versus the fourth finger, the ratio of the two. And just to show how bi whoa, did a lot of hands just go up in this auditorium. <laughs> And just to show how biologically compelling the explanation is for it, I don't actually remember which, like, who's got the greater four to two ratio, which sex or whatever, but it is a very... Now people are checking each other's hands. <laughs> okay, the first wave and now all this chimp hand inspection stuff happening in here. And what has been shown quite reliably since then is on the average, gay men tend to have the finger length ratio of straight women rather than of straight men. A small effect there. Another even more bizarre finding, which is there is something called the autoacoustic reflex. And what that is, is if you sit there and plug your ears up with your fingers, you will hear a noise that's just coming from the intrinsic vibration of something rather in your ears. And that's the autoacoustic reflex generating some low hertz sound in there. And the rate of the oscillation differs by sex in humans, which no doubt explains everything about the tragic wars of the sexes and why people just don't understand each other by gender because of their ears vibrating at different speeds. But what these studies have also shown was gay men having the autoacoustic reflexive vibratory speed more typical of straight women than straight men. Again, a very small effect. What are all of these about? The assumptions are it's got to do with something with prenatal hormone environment. Stay tuned. We will be coming back to this. Now, somewhere in there, you may ask, okay, well, what about the neurobiology of sexual orientation in women? Vastly smaller literature, far, far less studied. What has been showed so far are only two endpoints. One is the same deal with the fourth to second finger ratio. On the average, gay women have the ratio more typical of straight men than straight women. The other thing that's been shown is the same autoacoustic reflex thingy going on there final realm of neurobiology, rather than issues of gay versus straight, what is the neurobiology of transsexuality? And that used to be considered to be purely a domain of psychopathology. If being gay used to be a certifiable psychiatric disorder up until the early 1970s, the American Psychiatric Association in their textbook, the Diagnostic Statistical Manual, you could be psychiatrically certified as ill. A psychiatric disorder was being homosexual or lesbian. And then in what had to have been one of the more all-time blowout committee meetings ever, they decided that, no, actually, it's not a psychiatric disorder. And overnight, about 40 million Americans were cured of a psychiatric disease. <laughs> the notion of transsexuality as a psychiatric disorder has had much, much longer shelf life. What's the neurobiology of that? To date, there have been a handful of studies, and they show essentially the same thing. Really, really interesting. Another region of the brain that shows a sex difference in its average size. Don't even worry about the name of this. It's called the bed nucleus of the striae terminalis. It's where the amygdala begins to send its projection into the hypothalamus. Another one to those gender differences. There's one type of neuron in there with a certain type of neurotransmitter where very, very reliably it is about twice the size in males than in females. Sufficiently so that even in human brains, you could pretty confidently determine the sex of somebody by seeing the number of these neurons. You'll see I'm not even saying the name of the neurotransmitter. It's irrelevant. It's just another one of those differences, a dimorphism in a region of the brain, a really, really reliable one. And this was a study done by some superb neuroanatomists looking at transsexuals. And what they showed was very interesting which was very, very reliably and a very powerful effect what you would see in their large, large sample size of transsexuals, brains post-mortem, was people would have this part of the brain the size not of their sex that they were born with, but rather of the sex they insisted they always actually were. Wow. Immediate questions one must ask. 
Okay, well maybe this is due to the fact that when people change gender, transsexual procedures, there's a whole lot of hormones involved and maybe that's doing something to this part of the brain. Critical control that they had was this was looking both at transsexuals who had made gender changes and those who went to their deathbed saying, this is not the sex that I am, I got the wrong body, but never made the change. It wasn't a function of having actually gone through the transition and the endocrine manipulations with it. Another control they had, which was looking at men who would get a certain type of testicular cancer where they would have to be treated with certain feminizing hormones. In other words, very similar to some of the endocrine treatments of male to female transgendered individuals and post-mortem you didn't see the changes there. It has nothing to do with the hormones. It had to do with the person insisting from day one that they got the wrong body. And this was a landmark study, fabulously well done and controlled and replicated once since then, showing that what transsexualism used to be thought of is that people who think that they're a different gender than they actually are. What this study suggests is what transsexualism is about is people who got the wrong gendered body. And these are people who are chromosomally of one sex, in terms of their gonads they're of that sex, in terms of their hormones they're of that sex, in terms of their genitalia and their secondary sexual characteristics they're of that sex, but they're insisting that's not who I really am, this part of the brain agrees with them.